senior Vietnamese diplomat announced that Vietnam is considering a new visa policy for tourists from India and other countries, aiming to increase tourism. The country values its strong bilateral ties with India and sees great potential in Indian tourism, especially in Da Nang, a popular beach destination. Efforts are underway to tailor offerings to Indian travelers, with Da Nang emerging as a top choice for Indian tourists, marking a significant growth in visitors from India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi warmly greeted Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, the Emir of Qatar, at the Indira Gandhi International Airport during his two-day state visit to India. Accompanied by a high-level delegation, the Emir is set to hold talks with Indian leaders, including President Draupadi Murmu and PM Modi, on enhancing bilateral ties. The visit aims to further strengthen the strong partnership between India and Qatar, especially in trade, energy and cultural relations. Tesla is hiring in India, marking a potential entry into the market after CEO Elon Musk's meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the US. The electric vehicle maker posted 13 job openings across Mumbai and Delhi, signaling its readiness to expand operations. Tesla's move comes as India reduces import duties, creating an opportunity for the company to tap into the growing EV market, despite concerns over high import taxes in the past. India's NTPC aims to build 30 gigawatts of nuclear power capacity over the next 20 years, tripling its original target with a $62 billion investment. The move follows the government's push for foreign and private sector involvement in nuclear energy. Despite local resistance, NTPC is seeking land across multiple states and partnering with global firms like EDF and General Electric to develop small modular reactors. The expansion aligns with India's goal to reach 100 gigawatts of nuclear capacity by 2047. The Indian Air Force is set to upgrade its Su-30 MKI fleet with the indigenously developed Virupaksh ASA radar, designed by DRDO. The advanced radar, featuring 2,400 TR modules, promises enhanced detection and tracking capabilities. Its plug-and-play design allows seamless integration into the Su-30 MKI without major modifications. This upgrade boosts the aircraft's effectiveness against evolving aerial threats, especially stealth planes, ensuring it remains a powerful asset for the IAF. Astra Microwave is in talks with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL to produce 130 UTAM ASA fire control radars for India's Tejas MK1A and MK2 jets. The first radar will be delivered for integration into the Tejas MK2 prototype by the end of 2023. The radar, developed by LRD, enhances detection and targeting capabilities. Starting with the 41st Tejas MK1A, HAL will replace the Israeli radar with the UTAM showcasing India's push for self-reliance in defense technology. At the Science and Technology Expo in IIT Jammu, the Indian Army showcased an advanced kamikaze drone with surveillance and attack capabilities. The drone can carry payloads of 150 to 300 grams and has a flight time of 30 minutes without a mini-drone and 15 to 20 minutes with one for kamikaze attacks. Defense personnel explained that the drone could release a mini drone to crash into targets, which is known as a suicide drone. The drone is also equipped with a small camera for both day and night operations, including a zoom feature for better surveillance. Congress MP Rahul Gandhi faced criticism for using what appeared to be a Chinese-made drone to criticize the government's policy. Smit Shah, president of the Drone Federation of India, expressed discomfort over the dismissal of India's drone industry, highlighting that over 400 companies in the country are actively developing drone technology. Shah emphasized that India now produces 60 to 70 percent of its drone components, and that the government has made significant strides since 2021 in recognizing drones as a major technological opportunity. He criticized the use of banned Chinese drones, stressing the importance of supporting indigenous drone innovation. At Aero India 2025, a senior official from Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, revealed that the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA, India's first indigenous fifth-generation fighter jet, would have an estimated cost of 1,000 Indian rupees crore, around $115.12 million, for each of its initial prototypes. This high cost is attributed to the advanced technologies involved in the aircraft's development and testing, 
How plans to produce five prototypes for flight trials and weapons testing, with the first expected to be ready by 2027 and its first flight in 2028. The cost for each subsequent prototype will be similar. However, the official noted that once the AMCA enters serial production in 2034, the per unit cost is expected to fall below $100 million due to economies of scale and streamlined manufacturing, positioning it as one of the most cost-effective fifth-generation fighter jets globally. The AMCA program marks a significant step toward India's self-reliance in aerospace and defense manufacturing, with the fighter's advanced features such as stealth, avionics, and AI-driven combat capabilities. Supported by the Indian Air Force, the AMCA aims to enhance India's aerial dominance and reduce dependence on foreign suppliers. Martin Baker, a leading manufacturer of ejection and crashworthy seats, is expanding its operations in India with a new facility in Bengaluru, set to open in 2025. The facility will focus on the maintenance and manufacturing of ejection seats for the Indian Air Force and explore export opportunities. At the Aero India Air Show, Steve Roberts, the head of business development, discussed the project. Martin Baker is delivering 108 IN 16G ejection seats for 83 Hindustan Aeronautics Tejas Mk 1A fighters, with about 40% already delivered and final deliveries expected by 2028. Additionally, discussions are underway with the Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA to develop a modified IN-16 seat for the Tejas MK-2 due to its updated cockpit. The company is also proposing its 18 Malawian Kwacha seat for production versions of the Tejas MK-2, as well as for the AMCA and the twin-engine deck-based fighter, Ted BF. Martin Baker has been supporting the Indian Air Force and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, with seats for in-service aircraft. Since 1946, the company has delivered over 92,000 ejection seats worldwide. Their seats are designed to safely eject pilots and deploy a parachute for landing, with the 16 Malawian Quach's US 16E seat being the only one to meet neck injury criteria standards. US President Donald Trump has pledged to provide India with Lockheed Martin's F-35 stealth fighter jets. India is considering acquiring these jets through a government-to-government -government deal similar to the Rafale deal with France. This approach would ensure pricing and delivery conditions aligned with the U.S. armed forces, though the number of F-35s acquired would likely be limited due to their high cost, akin to the two squadrons of Rafale jets India operates. The F-35 acquisition could serve as a temporary solution until India's advanced multirole combat aircraft program, which aims to deliver 120 indigenous jets by 2036, produces its first aircraft. The F-35 deal may include more stringent end-user monitoring to prevent access by foreign personnel, particularly from Russia. This concern stems from the presence of Russia's S-400 air defense systems in India, as the F-35 is designed to evade such systems, and no country has operated both simultaneously. The Pentagon had previously raised objections over this issue, emphasizing the need to prevent the S-400 from being adapted to target the advanced F-35 jets. Unlike the Rafale deal, the F-35 acquisition could involve tighter controls on usage. That's all from YKS Team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Thanks for watching.